Hey there, welcome to Oh Happy Plants. This is an overview of pest issues you might encounter on your houseplant adventures. We are going to go through the most common pests you'll encounter and give you an idea of what the damage looks like. In other videos, we'll detail the specific pests, including their life cycle and how to deal with them. This one is just for identification, just in case you don't know what the pest you're dealing with looks like. All right, so first, don't be scared. A lot of people are totally overwhelmed and think that dealing with pests is really complicated, but usually it's not. Once you know about the common pests, you'll know how to identify them. And then once you know what you're dealing with, you'll know how to find the relevant OHP tutorial so you can solve the issue. All right, so if you're thinking your plant has pest damage, here are the main culprits. Thrips, scale, cyclamen and broad mites, mealybug, whitefly, fungus gnats, spider mites, and aphids. I'll mention three other bugs right now that you might see that we're not going into detail on because they're either harmless or uncommon. First, occasionally a little beetle will come in from outside and will munch holes in your leaves. They are very shy, so you probably won't ever actually see the beetle. You're just going to see the damage. Um, it looks like little, like little bites taken out of the leaves. Um, they're one of the only types of pests that will actually munch like proper holes in the leaves. And... The great thing about these little beetles, like number one, they're not common on houseplants. They usually just come in from outside from like whatever bush you have outside or something like that. And they also usually either die very soon within a week or two, or they go back outside. I don't really worry about them much. And usually it's just one or two beetles get in. So it's not really a big deal. It's not like they breed inside on your plants and cause a crazy infestation. Um, next, soil mites are a thing. They're tiny, soft-bodied bugs that crawl all over your soil and in the pot, and a lot of people will see them and freak out and think they're like spider mites, but if they're on the soil, they're usually just soil mites. They're, they're pretty fast-moving little bugs, and they eat the compost in your soil mix, and they're really harmless. They're harmless to the plant, um, but a lot of people don't like creepy crawlers on their plants, and so they want to get rid of them, so if you want to kill them, you can treat them the same as the other types of mite that we have on here. Um, last, often you'll see a small centipede in the bottom of a plant pot, and they actually only eat organic ma matter or um, sometimes little bugs, and they're harmless to your plant. They're not going to eat the roots, and they're like little kind of brownish, uh, orangey centipedes that are often found in houseplants. And usually you only see them dead in the saucer after they die, you know, so I don't even, I don't even worry about them. It's, it's just not worth my time. Um, all right, let's get into these real jerks. Okay, first off, fungus gnats. Here's how you can tell if you have fungus gnats. First, if you notice gnats flying in your face, it's probably fungus gnats, especially if you recently brought home a new plant or repotted a plant. These guys hitch a ride on the soil, and if a plant or a bag of soil had eggs in it, they'll hatch out in your house, and they'll pretty soon they'll start bugging you. They're very small, about the size of a fruit fly, but with an elongated body. Fruit flies have little round bodies, and so that's how you can tell the difference. And these guys often will settle into the soil, so if you knock on or wiggle your plant pot, you might see them fly up and out. And um, these ones are the ones, like the little bugs that fly in your face, and they keep like buzzing around your mouth. And the reason for that is because they're attracted to decaying matter in the soil. That's where they lay their eggs, so their little babies have something to eat. They don't actually harm the plant, but um, they, they're attracted to the CO2 that you exhale because decaying organic matter also emits CO2. And so that's why they fly around our face. And really, that's the only issue is they're annoying as all heck. And so I like to just get rid of these. Um, again, we're going to have a video detailing each pest and how to deal with it. So once you identify your pest, go ahead and pop over and find that other video. All right, next, thrips. These are some of the hardest pests to eradicate, but it can be done. Now, the adults are hardest to kill because they've got kind of like a hard shell on the outside. Um, so it might take regular treatment to kill all of the emerging baby thrips until all the adults die off. And so that might be one of the main things that you focus on. Um, but again, we'll cover that in the other video. Um, you want to recognize these by their movement. They're one of the quickest pests. They live on the leaves, usually the backs of the leaves, and they cause discolored patches to appear as they suck the plant juices out of the leaf. Basically, you're looking for like patches on the leaf that look like some, some little bug like pierced it and sucked the juice out. And babies are white or tan, and they can be many different sizes depending on the stage they're at in their life cycle. And then the adults are black, and they look like elongated beetles. 
Okay, next, this is white fly. These are also little plant juice suckers, and if they don't kill your plant by sucking it dry, they'll kill it on accident. They secrete this substance called honeydew, which is, um, I don't know, I guess it's just their poop. But, um, but ants will sometimes try to eat it, but also there's this mold, black sooty mold, really is attracted to honeydew. And so if you have honeydew all over your plant, then black sooty mold can take over and that'll also kill your plant. So it's a really good idea to get rid of these little suckers. So to recognize them, you want to look for a totally white little bug that flies up in a cloud, like a cloud of them will fly up if you disturb the plant they're on. Now I've heard stories from work about a, a white fly infestation so bad that it was just like this massive cloud of bugs. Like, you know, when you're like down by a beach or something and you walk through a cloud of gnats like imagine that but 10 times worse so with this it's a really good idea to take care of them as soon as you notice them and again just go to the video on white fly and we'll we'll detail the uh the complete care and just how to get rid of these all right, next, spider mites. Um, they are one of my least favorite pests because they're incredibly common on many varieties of plants. And they're also so tiny. So if there's just a couple on a plant, you won't know until the population starts to explode. So you might notice leaf drop and um, and like the plant being unhappy. And you might think it's like a watering issue before you actually notice these bugs. So the reason they're so common and the reason they are so prolific also is because they can lay hundreds of thousands of eggs per mite. So the female spider mite only has to mate once and then she can lay 300,000 to 400,000 eggs. And so if one, like, one already mated female spider mite hitches a ride on your plant and comes home with you, she's set to totally decimate that sucker. And so they're also so small and light that the wind can carry them from one plant to another. So if you have plants in a nursery or even a bush outside with spider mites, the wind can carry the mites inside an open window and land on your house plants. Sometimes all it takes is a few for a plant to start dropping leaves because they're just little tiny insidious little bugs. And, um, and so sometimes you'll just notice the leaf drop before anything else. So anyway, deter to determine if this is your issue, you want to look for a really fine webbing. Initially, it'll be where each leaf joins the main stem or along the veins or edges of the leaves, anywhere there's a little protected crevice or pocket for them to hide. And as the population grows, it'll cover the leaf like you see on the left. If you're having trouble seeing the web, give the plant a little spritz of water. The water is going to stick to any webbing, and so that'll make it easier to see. All right, cyclamen and broad mites. They're two more little plant vampires, and I group them together because it's impossible to tell them apart without a microscope. I just call them all cyclamen mites, but probably most of the ones I see are broad mites, so whatever. Um... You'll most likely see the damage before you see the bug, and if you notice your plant's new growth yellowing around the edges, and you see kind of like a fine, even-sized dust on the leaves, that dust is probably actually tiny mites. On this picture here, you can see them kind of along, I'm going to move my mouse over here, along this center vein, there are some little tiny specks, and... Um, and those little tiny specks are the mites themselves. And they are living there and sucking just a little bit of juice out, but the effect you see is on the edge of the leaf where it's kind of yellowy. And you can see a couple of the other leaves in that picture. They're totally dark green. That's the color they should be, just to give you a little example of the difference there. Now, these guys can also cause curling of the new leaf growth. As they suck the juices out, brand new leaves come in deformed. In the photo on the left, you can see the yellowing leaf edge as well as some very tiny dust. And they really do like to hide in those crevices of the leaves. So on a leaf like this, there aren't too many crevices, so they hide along the main vein. But in other leaves that have like ruffling and stuff, you'll see them just kind of tucked down in there. All right, scale. Scale bugs are basically little tanks that scoot around really slowly on your plants, feeding on the sap. Now, their hard covering protects them from many types of pest control, but we've got solutions for you. But first, on to identifying these little jerks. Now, there are many types of scale, but the most common found on houseplants are hemispherical scale, shown here. And the older they are, the bigger they get. And if it's a minor infestation, you can just gently scrape them off with, like, some people use like a little razor blade. You can really use anything like the, the tip of a knife works. Um, you just want to be super careful about not damaging your plant. Just kind of lift the edge of the scale bug off. 
And, um, and then afterwards you do want to treat the plant because that scale bug lays eggs underneath that shell. And so if you scrape the bug off, you may still be leaving some eggs behind, which just means the infestation will return. And also it's a good idea to remove them because whether or not you spray it down and kill the bugs, the dead bugs are gonna remain stuck to the plant. And so then it's hard to tell if all the bugs are gone or if you're seeing new ones. And so just go ahead and remove those. And it's it's a really good idea to, um, to catch them early. This plant is actually one that I have in my shower here at home. And um, it's a, a staghorn fern and I have, I received it with bugs on it. And I was like, oh, perfect. Let me just let these bugs grow for a little while so I can take good pictures for for everybody to see. And so this is kind of like a weird case where I'm basically farming these bugs for you guys because I didn't have any scale at work to take pictures of. And so um so these little guys, I'm going to because I have my pictures now, I'm going to go ahead and take care of them soon because I just cannot have them spreading to my other plants. But luckily, this plant is in a place where it's far from any other plants and they don't move that fast. And frankly, unless a plant with scale is right next to another plant, the scale is not going to just like travel long distances and get to other plants. It's going to be pretty contained to that one because they move so slowly. So that's actually kind of kind of good of them you know they're not they're not the worst infestation in the world i have seen them completely decimate plants once once they really start um the population really starts exploding so it is a good idea to get a handle on them and um still it's it's not that big a deal all right next is mealybug they are basically the vampire sheep of the bug world and they're totally gross. Now, all stages are pretty fuzzy looking and that's actually a waxy coating on the outside of their body and it protects them from the elements, but we have solutions for that. It doesn't protect them from us. Um, so from egg to adult, they're pretty fuzzy. The eggs just look like kind of balls of fluff on the plant and then the adults have those weird little like things on the sides. I forget what they're called, those little finger looking things on the sides of their body. And the adult females are usually two to six millimeters long. And that said, one time I found one on my head that was at least half an inch long. And that's like twice as big as the internet tells you they grow to. It was huge. I was working in a huge atrium and I had to climb under plants and these things were everywhere. So when, when I went to clean up in the bathroom afterwards, I found this massive sucker just chilling in my hair. Supposedly they can't get that big. So the moral of this story is that you should never trust a mealybug. Anyway, you'll notice these little floof butts hanging out on leaves and they tend to concentrate their egg laying to new growth. So the growth tips are gonna get fuzzy the fastest. They don't really hang out on soil unless they're crawling to another plant. All right, aphids are also wee vampires and some of them actually inject a toxin into the plant that can cause stunted and deformed growth. So if you see the growth tip, all deformed or new leaves coming in deformed, it may be aphids. Often that can be mites, but it may also be aphids. The great thing about aphids is they're really easy to see. You can see them on the left. That's just a picture of the shoot of a rose, I believe. And um, you recognize them by their soft bodies. They're either green like that or they're black. And sometimes they're kind of cream colored too. And often outside they'll be farmed by ants who like to eat the honeydew they secrete so again they secrete that kind of honeydew which can lead to the black sooty mold so it's really important to take care of them before they cause too much damage but again they have little soft bodies they're pretty um pretty susceptible to any of the treatments we have and so it's pretty easy to take care of them all right, that covers the common bugs you're gonna see on houseplants. Now that you know what you're dealing with, that likely diagnosed whatever you think you're, um, you're up against, then you can go and find the tutorial specific to that bug and you're gonna learn about the life cycle, which will inform your treatment plan. And then you're gonna learn some treatment options so you can combat that pest in the best way possible. Thanks for visiting Oh Happy Plants. And again, to our members, thank you so much for your commitment to plants, both your own and to our reforestation project. For each membership sold, one tree is planted every single month. Together with Oh Happy Plants, our community members are reforesting the world. Happy planting. <laughs>